just so you know, Fauci, you know, says that he abides by FOIA and he's, he didn't do anything wrong with respect to FOIA. And I, I don't have evidence he did, but I do know the government in stalling the release of records to us told us that the reason they had to stall the release of records and it would slow the release of records was because Fauci and his team needed to directly review all the documents Judicial Watch was getting. We're not stopping investigating and holding accountable the government for what went on during COVID. We just filed this new lawsuit against HHS, which is the agency under which Fauci worked, for records on the preparations for and the response to the COVID-19 pandemic. We asked, I think, almost two years for these documents. So this is, a, we took a while to get around to this. Records and or communications of the Assistant Secretary of Preparedness and Response, Department of Health and Human Services, that refer to and or document any after action reports, lessons learned, after action reviews, reviews of procedures, analysis, studies, hot washes concerning prepar preparing and or responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. Like, why didn't we follow, I went to see the documents explaining, why didn't they follow the plans for dealing with a pandemic and just make it up as they go along because it sounded good, six feet sounded good, masks sound good. The Administration for Strategic Preparedness and Response coordinates the Strategic National Stockpile, which distributes medicine and medical supplies if local supplies run out during a public health emergency. In October 2023, the Inspector General's Office of HHS issued a report titled, The Strategic National Stockpile Was Not Positioned to Respond Effectively to the COVID-19 Pandemic. We've spent millions prepping for pandemics. And Fauci's agencies, his colleagues, HHS, didn't really have the money spent and pre prepare us in a way if the pandemic was even worse than it was. We were caught flat-footed because the prep work hadn't been done. The report made several recommendations. Mitigate the risk presented by relying on foreign supply chains and just-in-time inventory strategies when determining annual stockpile purchases. So, the st you know, a stockpile isn't much of a stockpile if you buy it the day of the emergency, right? That's what they were doing. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, but you know, that, that, that's what that language means. Develop a strategic plan for the stockpile that clearly defines the goals and objectives of the stockpile and the stockpile's roles and responsibilities for responding to emergency events, including pandemics. Work to increase the annual funding to keep pace with the increased responsibilities of the stockpile. I mean, this is the disconnect between reality and government and what we're being told to worry about. They want to scare us about these pandemics, but when it comes to doing the basic work to prepare for them, they don't want to do it because that's real work and that's hard work. We saw that with the pandemic with COVID, and I guarantee you they're not ready to go for a potential other pandemic that gets people panicked. As I say, the Fauci-led federal response to the pandemic was panicked, political, and harmed the lives and liberties of Americans. And we need more information on how that disaster came about. So what's going to happen to Dr. Fauci? I don't know. I mean, as I say, I think he should be uh, criminally investigated um, in part over this gain of function fraud. But one thing we should ensure as a public is that there's no more Dr. Fauci's in the sense that no government official who is unelected should have the type of power that Dr. Fauci has ever again. We elect a president, his cabinet officials are appointed by the president, confirmed by the United States Senate, which is a check, and involvement of Congress in, in our governance. 
See, that's called self-government. But putting bureaucrats effectively above appointed officials confirmed by the Senate or above the president. That's not the way a republic's supposed to operate. So I use the word no more doctor, I use the phrase no more Dr. Fauci's in the sense that this was a man who had too much power in a democratic, I'm allowed to say that word, aren't I? Constitutional republic. And I think there should be accountability for any misconduct he committed while there. And we've got these FOIA issues that have come up. The Congress is outraged about that. We are too, because it's our cases. When the FOIA lady, the top FOIA official, is telling Fauci's aides on how to avoid FOIA, I'm surprised Judicial Watch got anything. And by the way, just so you know, Fauci you know, says that he abides by FOIA and he's, he didn't do anything wrong with respect to FOIA. And I, I don't have evidence he did. But I do know the government in stalling the release of records to us told us that the reason they had to stall the release of records and it would slow the release of records was because Fauci and his team needed to directly review all the documents Judicial Watch was getting. And that was pretty extraordinary based on our experience. We didn't necessarily, we, FOIA, they don't tell us, well, you can't get these records as quickly as you want as the law requires because the head of the agency is getting involved. That was mighty unusual, Fauci's involvement in our FOIAs. The government told us he was involved. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.